Right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week. Uh, let's just begin this time with a word of prayer, and then uh, we'll get into our teaching. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for yet another week you have given us, Lord. And even as we come together to learn uh, from your word, God, we pray that you will speak and minister to our hearts. Uh, Lord, that we open our hearts to you, God, that we receive everything that you want to speak to us, Lord. Uh, and Lord, we just uh, surrender this day. Everything that we are learning, O oh God, uh, may it be fruitful in each of our lives, God. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So we'll get into chapter three. Uh, and so what I just realized is I think we'll need to pick up a little bit of uh, pace uh, because we have quite a lot to cover. Uh, so we'll get into chapter three and we'll talk about right workplace attitudes. Right. So uh, last week we looked at career, right? How uh, the Lord can lead us into different careers. There are transitions that he takes us into. Now, when you and I are in a workplace, right, whatever it is, it could be something that you've just joined, something you're interested in, not interested in. Our attitude, right, workplace attitudes is what will carry us through, right? I'm sure you heard that saying, right? Uh, your attitude will determine your altitude. Right? Uh, your attitude will determine your altitude. That means how high you will reach, right? Uh, attitude is basically the way you look at things. And you know, the best example is you take a glass of water, you give uh, and just put half a glass of water in there. And you ask people, what do you say about this? Some will say it's half empty. Some will say it's half full. Right? That's what attitude is, the way you look at things. And the way you look at things influences your choices, your actions, and your behaviors. Right? Uh, and so it is very important. It's very critical as people in the workplace or in ministry to have the right attitude. Right? The moment our attitude is is to, towards something is you know very um, you know you know you know you just look at it as okay it's okay uh, you know doesn't matter attitude then there's something wrong we need to correct it right uh, and so we look at what are some of the right workplace attitudes that are required for us as believers and also how we can develop these attitudes now I'm not saying that you know we must have uh, you know, the moment we start working, we will have all the right attitudes. Right? I've shared, right, when I joined the workplace, uh, working in a corporate sector, I didn't like it. I, uh, it's not like I enjoyed going to work. But I knew that if I have to be good at what I'm doing, I cannot have this attitude. So there are changes that we will have to make. right? And remember that uh, not all work environments are the same. For example, APC as an organization works at, with a certain environment. There's a certain environment. Now, you may have other churches or other organizations. They have a different environment, right? And it's not only the workplace. If you look at Bible college, APC Bible college has a certain work environment. And, uh, and the way we do things, we do it in a certain structure. There may be other colleges which have a different environment, right? So every place, it's different. But we must understand that there will be people who uh, they, they, they'll be hostile. They will try to undercut you. They will try to uh, put you down. There will be gossip. There will be all kinds of uh, things happening in an organization. Why? Because all of us are people. None of us are robots, right? We all are people. We have these natural feelings, and it's natural, right? One of the things that you and I will, uh, while making this professional journey, one thing that we must do is we must have the ability to maintain good attitude regardless of what is happening around us. Right? Uh, and you see, for example, right, Paul and Silas were thrown into prison. And they had so many uh, you know, reasons to to cry and to say, God, why is this happening to me? It's all the attitude, right? 
they they said no we'll choose to do this but could they have cried yes right there's nothing wrong god body is paining emotionally hurt mentally hurt physically hurt every day everywhere we are hurt and now we are sitting in prison look at people in the old testament they went through so many challenges but the attitude is what matters right look at moses you know in in um, in the chapter where he goes to i forget the chapter but he goes up to the mountain and what does he say he says god i will not let you go until you show me your glory now moses has seen enough of god's glory he has seen miracles he has seen god working so powerfully but he says no god i need to see more i need to see you right so our attitude must not change regardless of what is happening around us right people will ridicule us people will make us feel happy you know the same people who put you up on the pedestal will stand on you it's going to happen right it, and if it doesn't happen in a workplace that's good right uh Oh, when Jesus remember when Jesus was uh, coming on the donkey what did they say what did they say hosanna hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord with the palm leaves and all of that we celebrate it after that we celebrate what good friday <laughs> why because the same people said crucify him same people same people right so there will be time people change right but our attitudes we can make sure you know jesus didn't change his attitude because hey they did they said this so now i'm changing no right so how can we do, how can we understand this remember number one attitude is a choice right it's a choice it's a choice we make okay i am going to look at this situation in this way even though everything around me is against me or everything every one around me feels that i'm not capable enough or every or you know i'm just standing here god with an empty hand our attitude is our choice you can say god i know that you're going to do something for me i'm going to trust in you or i can say god i didn't expect this to happen to me why did you let this happen to me you see that choice is there it's a choice that we have right and it is how you decide to act or react and so attitude is contagious give me one example where you feel attitude is contagious you know, you think about this right sorry wrong attitude yeah so when i talk about attitude it's good and bad right what is okay let's take good one uh, let's take one good attitude and a wrong attitude that affected choices of the people around them let's take the wrong attitude first sorry jealousy yeah no give me examples from the bible saul very good but it's a wrong attitude right but sorry balam yeah wrong attitude i'll give you another example i am looking for this because it's there in my mind when moses he brought the people out of egypt what did the israelites sing praise the lord he brought us out of egypt they were singing and happy now suddenly moses has gone up the mountain what happened one or two people in the i mean maybe a whole team of people they said okay moses is not going to come back down let's build a calf and do something else you see how the attitude changed the the choice immediately changed and then moses came down the mountain he said whoever is on my side come this side again the choice changed right our attitude can affect the people around us right look at chadrak mishak and abednego three of them will throw you in the fire imagine one of them said i don't want to die i have uh, i want to get married i want to have children i want to live this life okay i'll bow down it could have affected the others but they all three stood strong right so always remember your your attitude will affect the people around you right let's look at a few points right on i'm on page 30 on your books 
your attitude always determines your altitude. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. Look at that. Daniel stood out because he had an excellent spirit. Now, Daniel 6 is when, um, you know, you have Darius, the third king. He's, a, he's the third one who's coming in. The kingdom of Babylon was divided into two. And now the Medes and the Persians are there. Uh, and Darius is the king. Darius says, Daniel stood out because probably he looked at Daniel and he said, Daniel, you only look after the things that are happening in the government. Why? Because there's an excellent spirit in you. Right? The enemies were looking for his enemies. So Daniel's enemies were looking for ways to get him out. But the king was considering not only to keep him, but to promote him. Now picture this. You have four or five people there. Oh, okay. So now since we are in the government, they're saying, now we'll try to get this fellow out. He didn't bow down to the uh, to that uh, Babylon, to the god, the, the statue. He's doing everything the way he wants to do it. So now is the best time. Babylon is divided. Now there's going to be new government, new rulers. So we get this Daniel out of here. This is what people were thinking. But when King Darius saw Daniel, he said to Daniel, we'll not only keep you, we'll promote you. Your attitude will determine your altitude. How you look at things. So it is your grace, your gifts, your skills that you bring to an organization that will affect your attitude, right? That, uh, that sets you apart. Why must I choose Daniel or why must I choose these other people? Maybe Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the others. Why must I do it? There should be a reason. Yes or no? Right? As a leader in an organization, I must have a reason for me to choose somebody. Right? For example, you know, one of the areas of ministry that uh, we do is the life group ministry. Right? So we appoint life group leaders. Why is it that we choose these leaders? There's something. There's something in their life. There's some. We can see it outside. There's a grace. There's a gift. There's a calling. Yes, right? And so our attitude towards that, towards our grace, our gifts, our calling will determine our attitude. The more you look at things in a small way, the more, you know, our attitude will be in a smaller way. The more you look at things which are important in, you know, in a, in a higher way, God will begin to raise us, right? I remember when I was in, you know, Bible college, I used to keep, Preaching, no, I used to keep preaching, and you know, always had this. We had this 15 10 minutes break, you do five minute sermon, catch one for make him sit, okay, translate five minute sermon. And they used to get so irritated with me, they used to always all the students would get so upset, you know, he's okay, not gonna keep quiet. Do you think I care? I don't care. And, they were, and so we would walk up to the hostel, right? It was like a 20 minutes walk. And they would say, oh, don't go with this guy, Paul. He's going to keep preaching on sermon all the way till there. He has no other work. I know. They don't. Do you think I care? It didn't bother me at all. Why? Because I knew one day I will stand up. I will do it. Now, this is this I have to do. There were times they were giving out pamphlets in the streets you know they would give out these give us those pamphlets and they would say go to outreach so some of the some of the guys would go and they would sleep in the hostel and so many times me and maybe two or three of us would go and we would just give out it'll be hot and you know empty pockets we would be giving out tracks but i knew that my attitude towards this is important is it a big thing no Will people stand and clap? Oh, Paul has gone for evangelism. Very great job. Nobody is there <laughs> to clap. But 
when we when we look at these small things and you and your attitude towards that is right it's a good attitude god begins to lift you up he gives you a, a higher altitude understand right so look at the small things and do it well people will want you in your team that's a good feeling no i want you in you come you be in my team it's such a good feeling and then you become a leader and then you say hey you come you be in my team that's a good feeling why it is not come out just like that it's because of your attitude how you looked at looked at things right second one do all for the glory of god first corinthians 10:31 therefore whether you eat or drink or whatever you do do all to the glory of god so motivation is important how many of you are not motivated i can say none why if you are not motivated you wouldn't have been there on this call or you wouldn't have been here sitting here you had you can you have maybe 10 other things you could do but you're motivated there's a reason you're here there is this reason you know uh, those who are online you logged in and you're listening there's a reason why there's a motivation and our motivation is what drives us it inspires us stimulates us and keeps us going now not always remember in our in our professional life or in ministry not always people will motivate you when people motivate you it's good you know you feel encouraged you feel hey yes i can do it but in a world that we live in the reality is not everyone are going to motivate you so what do you do that time you motivate yourself you say no i'm going to do this i love the uh, the psalmist david no He's so powerful what does he say in uh, he says when uh, bless the lord o my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name he says and there are so many psalms where he's running away from saul he's running away from his life right how long will it take for saul to find him he can find him in any time but he's saying god my heart is my spirit is broken i feel weary i'm this is how i'm feeling but lord i know that you are with me who was there with david that time anybody was there nobody was there what did he do he motivated himself he said god i know i can just picture this david is sitting in one of those caves and he's saying i killed goliath huh i went and helped saul i played the guitar also for him when he is uh, you know possessed by uh, oppressed by the devil devils and now he's coming to kill me better i just go back and i say okay i don't want to be the king go back to doing what i have to do finish end of story but what drove david he said probably he said no when all those thoughts came he would have may have said no 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 i remember the prophet samuel he came all my brothers were standing in line but he chose me so god has anointed me to be the king of israel i'm not going to give up that's called motivation right it's easy to give up during difficult times motivation you are empowered by god you when you say to yourself i'm going to do this god empowers you but he gives us the strength he says push on don't give up in between right um uh, we must be motivated to glorify god in all that we do so to do everything we glorify god and we find this as the greatest motivator in our life right god to me this looks very difficult but one thing i know you can do it in my life and let me let it be to glorify you we have plenty of examples in the bible right david joseph daniel abraham jacob all these wonderful men of god they did it for the glory of god right and when you sorry let's go here um, you are empowered to carry his name you are you represent him you display his wisdom his excellence his virtue and greatness through your work look at that you display your his wisdom his excellence his virtue and his greatness 
So when you and I are motivated to work and do what God has called us to do, we display all of these. We begin to exalt Him. People look at us and say, hey, good job. The moment you're, for example, you're in a workplace, right? And you say, and you, you do something and you've done an achievement, right? And you say, this is because this is what the Lord Jesus has done in my life. That one sentence is bringing glory to God, right? Remember last week we talked about that boxer, right? world champion. There, there are people from different sports, right? Who are world champions. They say, I did this for the glory of God. There was a more, there was a time in um, Brazil where uh, the, the team of the Brazilian soccer team, they were all believers. Right? I, I think it was the early 2000s, if you had followed soccer, you know, they would all wear, wear those bandanas saying, I love Jesus. Right? And they would, they were, the Brazilian team was a team which never cheated. They never caused any faults and fouls. And, and they won, I think, three continuous World Cups. They all said it's because of God. Right? So when whatever we do, when we say this, this is to glorify God, it brings honor to God. Right? Let's go to the next point. Keep your ambition kingdom minded. Very important. Even as we prepare, even as we continue our work in the Lord or we are serving God or, or in the workplace, keep your ambition kingdom minded, kingdom focused. I'm doing this, yes. It, uh, God has asked me to work. I have to provide for my family. I have to be there. I have to work. And God will bless the work of my hands. But even as I do all of this, my main intention is to build the kingdom of God. Right? Now, you see, there's a thin line. right? As believers, we must understand this. We must never go overboard. We'll never say, I will not work. God will provide all my needs. That is silliness. I can never say, I will only work and I will do it myself. That is foolishness. You get that thin line, right? We must, we must work. And we must say, God, whatever I've achieved, it is because of your grace and your gift. Your gifts that you have put in my life. Right? So when we do that, we are being kingdom focused. Here, Matthew 6.33, very common verse. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added unto you. So what is our top, top priority? Building God's kingdom, being kingdom focused. Now, I do understand, like, you know, some of, some of us may ask, how can I be build God's kingdom when I'm nine to five in an office? Nine to five, I'm sitting in an office. How am I building God's kingdom? When you are glorifying God in your work, when you're working uh, in righteousness, you're working, you're using the gifts and the grace that God gives you, you are kingdom focused. Because who gave you that job? Your degree? Your certificate? God gave. Right? When God gives, when you say, God, whatever I'm doing, let it glorify your name, you're kingdom focused. Right? It becomes the focus of our dreams, our goals, our pursuits. Everything that we wish to become and accomplish professionally, spiritually, uh, in whatever organization, whichever sphere of influence we are working in, we can be kingdom focused. Right? Fourth one, next point. Always remember there is more to life than just making money. Yes? There's more to life than making money. Let's read Proverbs 11.28. He who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like foliage. You know, making money is not wrong. Is it wrong to make money? Without money, we can't do anything. Yes or no? There will be no APC Bible college if there's no money. right? We are not saying, oh, we are uh, God is going to... No. Money is important. But we must remember that everything in life is not about money. 
right? Uh, sometimes we see people, they, they want to grow up in the corporate ladder. Okay, now I'm a team leader. Then I want to become an assistant manager. Then I want to become a manager. Then I want to become a area manager. Then I want to become a senior manager. Then what? General manager and assistant to CEO and become the CEO, which is good. But when I only focus on that, so for example, this young man, he's maybe in his early 30s, he's now a manager and he says, before I become 40, I should become a CEO. So he's got 10 years. But in those 10 years, he's only focused on money. When I get to that position, that is the money that I will use to buy this, buy that, buy that. <clears throat> No, nothing wrong. But even when you focus, we need to understand that there are other things in life. Imagine this person is a, is a Christian or a believer, and he's saying, no, Sunday I can't come to church. Why? Because it's a full day. I can work. I can do something. Right? I can, I can prepare some reports and do that additional work. Because one day I have to become a CEO. Now, is that right or wrong? Right or wrong? Wrong? Right? Now he's missing church. He's missing fellowship with God. And he's saying, because the whole day will go in church, so I don't want to go. To, I can use that for something else. That's when your priorities are changed. There's more to life. Right? There are meaningful relationships. There are serving people, solving problems, fulfilling your divine purpose. And we, when we look at you know, what is happening around, there are plenty of stories where people who are making so much money, but they're still empty in life. Money is not going to satisfy everything. With money, you cannot buy a relationship. Can we? We can. We can do a lot of things, right? Uh, you know, they have that saying, money can't buy happiness. Right? But now there are. Well, you know, these youth, and somebody sent me this message Ma money can buy happiness. And this guy is sitting in one, you know, luxury car, and he's saying, Money can buy happiness. How long will he sit in that car? Once he goes to the traffic, there's no happiness. All the happiness is gone. Right? So, so remember that, you know, fulfilling God's purpose, glorifying God, there's something more to life than just making money. Now, the flip side is, I don't want money. God is the creator of money. He will put money in my account. He will not put money into anybody's account. <laughs> right? You have to do, you have to work, and you get paid, and you go up the ladder. Very simple. Right? So you we, we balance it up. Remember, God is your master. Money is your slave. You serve God, money will follow. Right? And that's true. The moment you, you're saying, okay, God, these are the things I want to do. And I want to do it to glorify you. God will make a way for you. God will send people. God will bring people to give into your ministry or your organization, whatever you're doing. Right? We don't have to stand with a bowl. Can you please fund us? No need. Right? Yes, there are times when, you know, when you look at towns and villages, we may, you know, we want funding and all of that is okay. But I'm saying it's, it, what I'm trying to say is money is not the center of everything. You wake up in the morning, oh, how much is in my account? Uh, so I have to make it another three digits extra. You know, that then there's something wrong. We've got to change it. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing must be, God, I thank you that I can breathe. Thank you for this life. That's the first thing that should come up. That means we've got our perspectives right. And out of that comes everything else. right? So just reiterating, making money is not wrong. But the perspective is important. right? If making money becomes a sole motivator, then we end up violating rules. We use you know, your crooked means. We hurt people. We this bribery extortion, all kinds of things can happen because making money is in the center of our mind and our heart. When God is the center, we'll think, okay, God, this is right. So I, this is something that I will not even step into. Right? Uh, using crooked means, violating rules, that's not 
something that you, you would allow me to do as your child, so I will stay away from it. Right? Yeah. Fifth one. Very important. Always walk in the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 15, 16. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Now, to walk in the fear of the Lord is to walk in reverence and to walk in honor. Right? It doesn't mean that whenever we are praying, we are fearful, oh, your God is going to come now. No, that's, that's not what it means. The fear of the Lord is basically reverence and honor. So I can be, for example, I can be in my room, locked in the room with my laptop. Everyone know me as a person who is a holy person. But if I'm, but for example, I'm, uh, this person is locked in the room with a laptop, but there's nobody who can question him. Now, there's a choice what I can watch, what I, what I don't have to watch. Now here comes the fear of the Lord. If what does the fear of the Lord does? No. As a believer, this is something that I must not do. Why? Because God is watching me. That is called fear of the Lord. And it doesn't need to be such a, you know, it could be small things. You know, I remember when I was in, when I was in BC, Bible college as a student, my responsibility was to make tea for all the students. So tea time is 7 a.m. Right. So I would wake up very early in the morning, finish prayer, finish everything. By 6.30, I will freshen up. I'll be ready. I get into the kitchen and start making tea. For, so we would put, you know, maybe three liters of milk, and we would carry. We would have tea, and then we would carry it for the first break, right? First uh, break, uh, uh, and so we would make that tea. I would make that tea. Many times I say, "Hey, go make your own tea." Felt like that. I realize, hey, I can't do that. Why? Because that is my responsibility, right? It is something that a responsibility that's given to me. Now, if they didn't drink tea, it doesn't mean they'll, uh, you know, like uh, they, they can't survive. They can survive, but I knew it's my responsibility. It's something that I have to do, right? Uh, and I, I would always think, you know, what if Jesus was there in my batch? Always, I kept saying that to myself. What if Jesus is in my batch and he doesn't have tea? Right? And I was, oh, man, okay. Jesus is going to come and sit, make tea. Right? Many times, oh, you know, we finish eating, you should wash the plate and keep. You can just leave it there. I'm going to wash it later. So, what if Jesus has to eat next in that same plate? Sit and scrub it. <laughs> okay, Jesus, eat. Nice. I wash the plate well. And these things have, it, it came over time. I, I just had to tell myself. It, it was not easy, right? But this fear of the Lord. Okay, God, uh, you know, uh, afternoon session, you know, during our time, afternoon sessions, we had word studies. And so it was one to two lunch break, two to three, three to three, 15 break, three, 15 to four, 15, session four, four, 15 to four, 30 break, four, 30 to five, 30 worship and prayer. Right, so that was our day. Worship and prayer. Now, rush to the hostel. Uh, just freshen up. You have about an hour study time. Right, so it was very. Uh, it was not easy as it, as it is now. I would say, right, but uh, there were many times I felt I don't have to follow this road. Right, I, I just want to go from here and go back home and just come to college and uh, attend college, go back home. But I felt that if I don't do this now, it's not going to help me. The fear of the Lord should be there. Okay, I'm doing it. Let me do it. Right. And um, in the workplace, there'll be numerous pressures, temptations, distractions. Remember, who's watching? Train yourself in small things. Right? In small things, you train yourself. And and as you do that, you ask yourself: Does this? Does what I'm doing? Does it honor God? What I'm doing is: Does it? you know show reverence to my god is it right in the eyes of god i remember this one time i had to i wanted to go meet my friends 
they were all having a get together. So I went up to the principal during that time at the Bible college. I said, um, I'm not feeling OK. I want to go home. He said, yeah, go. And I went to my, I went and met my friends. But you know that thorn in, the, you know, in my mind, oh, man, what did I do? And all of them are talking. And then I was thinking, I, said, I was not talking. And my friends say, hey, what? You've come up for so long. Why are you not talking? I didn't talk. Then suddenly, I just felt this, you know, like this heaviness in my heart. And I said, I got to go. I was there for probably 10 minutes. I rode for half an hour to meet them. I was there for 10 minutes. I said, I got to go. I came back to my the principal asked me, the sir asked me, what happened? I said, I lied to you. I, I, I'm OK. I just went to meet my friend. I wanted to meet my friend, but there was something in me. And I could not. So I'm sorry that I did this wrong. Right? Now, it was not easy for me to do that. I was scared. Body throws me out in college. Right? But I had to do it. I had to do it. I had to make things right. And so there will be situations in workplaces, right? We can, uh, we can, you know, we can change things in our uh, files. We can change things in our Excel sheets. We can do all of that. Is it right in the eyes of God? That's the number one question we ask ourselves, right? So walk in the fear of God. Uh, uh, let's go to the next one. The fruit of the Spirit are winning attitudes. Walk in them. What's the fruit of the Spirit? Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Yes. Go ahead, read it. You have a mic with you? Yeah. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against such things as this. Yeah. The fruit of the Spirit are winning attitudes. Meaning what? When we walk in the fruit, it, you will only win. You will only be fruitful, right? You see that. The presence and work of the Holy Spirit brings about transformation of who we are, our character, our attitudes, and our entire personhood. Everything changes in us, right? When The way we look at people, is, you know, uh, when we look at people, we say, OK, there's unforgiveness. Suddenly, there's love. Right? There'll be people who'll be very rude to you in the workplace. I remember this boss that I had in the workplace, he would come and say, he had this habit of throwing things. Right? And for me, throwing things is, I would get really upset. Right? So he would come and say, um, OK, guys, what are you guys doing? Right? This is almost, we have finished, and we've not even you know, met our targets. And he would throw the papers there. So just look at our work in the morning to afternoon. And take a look at it. And many times I said, you take a look at it. <laughs> I don't want to pick it up from down. You want to give it to me? You give it to me in my hand. I've said that. And and I've sat, because that time I was a young guy. You do, you throw me out, I get another job. No problem. I don't have commitments. And it doesn't. you can't treat me like this. Now, at one point, I was like, I, I would say something. And I was like, oh, my life. God, you know, see, now you're not around the praise the Lord gang. All are like this, right? So now I say, God, what to do? You know, you're feeling hurt inside. I shouldn't have, I should have just kept quiet. Let him shout how much he was. So there are times, there was one time the Holy Spirit told me, you go and apologize. I said, no, he should apologize. <laughs> Why have done everything correct? Why should I apologize? So I didn't apologize. Two, three days over. And I just knew because it's it was just there in me. I couldn't see him. I couldn't talk to him because these guys they'll shout and they'll forget. Next day they'll be back to normal. But for me it wasn't like that. How can he shout at me? My own parents didn't shout at me. So I went to him and I said, "Listen, three days back you said this no. What I said, Paul, uh, you threw the papers at me and then remember I I talked back to you. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, sorry, <laughs> you know." Uh, but there was this whole weight just left. And I was thankful that I was able to go and apologize. Right? Now, without the fruit of the Spirit, we cannot do it. But it says here, the Spirit produces love. And because of that, you know, it, it just, 
the in the workplace god just began to lift me up really lift me up there were people who were there for 10 years 12 years there for 2 years and i was getting promoted just like that for no reason I, of course a lot of hard work a lot of uh, things that we i learned and uh, unlearned as well but they are winning attitudes i right? the gift of the spirit right so sorry the fruit of the spirit joy a positive happy passionate enthusiasm peace a sense of calmness even during you know turmoil and challenges patience being committed being willing kindness gentleness in word and deed goodness demonstrating benevolence and generosity faithfulness being sincere and dependable dependable that's a very very important word in the workplace can i depend on you right even in the ministry we may we have leaders they have to we depend on them we said okay you do this right um uh, humility being meek uh, not forcing your way and and then self control so this is something that we can pray and say god wherever i am help me to walk in the fruit of the spirit right next one do your work obediently sincerely willingly and cheerfully let's read ephesians 6 5 through 8 anyone would like to read ephesians chapter 6 5 through 8 slaves obey your human masters with fear and trembling and do it with a sincere heart as to you were serving christ do this not only when they are watching you because you want to gain their approval but with all your heart do what god wants as slave of christ do your work as slave cheerfully as to you serve the lord and not merely human beings remember that the lord will reward each of us whether slaves or free for the good work we do yeah so during when you look at the bible times you have uh, masters and slaves right now what do we have we have employees and managers now it's we shouldn't think like okay he's a master and he's a slave like what we talk about slave no it's just you know employer employee right and so right now we have employers and employees and uh, uh here it says that there are key instructions given to a person who works for under works for or under someone else here are certain aspects we must be we must do we must obey be sincere wholeheartedly and willingly and cheerfully now to obey means to follow instructions with reverence and a yielded heart so here's the thing sometimes our leaders and our bosses in the corporate uh, wherever we are working may tell us to do something now you may feel that it's not important one or two you may feel that you can do it in a better way right uh, or three you you may have three different ideas better than the idea that he is given now the scriptures here say obey your masters or employees obey your employers right stay aligned to what they've been asked you to do do sorry be sincere means to do it with genuine interest even when you're not watched remember there will come a time right when your opinion will matter now let me give you this example you joined a company you're working you finish 6 months now after 6 months the team leader is not going to ask you hey tell me what can we do you know there's this problem happening will he ask a person who is 6 months in the organization he will not ask because he is only 6 months he doesn't know anything he's still learning he's still growing he's still developing himself right but imagine your 6 years in that organization now you've seen things you've seen ups and downs right and you've learned the hard way and now the team leader will come and say hey what do we do can we do this this way right so yes we may have ideas we may have strategies uh but always remember to be obedient first there'll come a time when god will give you opportunities to 
make decisions to speak and to uh, you know to speak into situations and to in people's lives right do things willingly with all your heart do things cheerfully and gladly without enthusi with with enthusiasm right one of the responsibilities that i had was uh, you know we had this some of our you know some people would write on these tables right so they would write you know their names as though they don't know their names so they would write their <laughs> names okay so one of my responsibility was suddenly the you know now i was leading worship at locations right so somewhere in my heart as a bible college student i'm leading worship so now no more doing bible college work suddenly my principal said come here take that spray and start wiping all the tables now i thought to myself hey i can play guitar i'm good at leading worship i'll do something else no i can learn some new songs so clean the tables I said, are you sure? So you want me to do that? Do it. So I, they gave me the spray and I was so upset with all the students. They've written notes <laughs> on the table. Some of them have drawn some things there. Some people have drawn a car. I was so upset with the students. I'm sitting and scrubbing it. And some of it is not going. So I called the fellow, whose table is this? Come here. You wipe it. So I, so I realized that after after a couple of days, I remember I, telling myself, I don't want to do this. And God just ministered to me saying, you do it sincerely with all your heart. Because you're being obedient. Now I thought to myself, you know, it was that day because I felt that because, you know, we, we would spend time in prayer and all that. And I thought to myself, what's the use of praying like three, four hours and coming in grumbling here? There's no point, right? It's only a show then. And then what do my classmates think? Oh, this fellow is praying three hours in the morning, coming and grumbling here. So I did not do that. <laughs> right. So I had to, God, at least for them. And I remember doing that. It was a small task. Uh, but at one point, I enjoyed doing it. Right. And so I would start scrubbing and then. And then anyone, I would look at everyone's table in the class. Anybody writes, that's it for you all. <laughs> right? But I would make sure. But what happened was uh, everything was neat. It was nice. Right? The place was clean. And, uh, and so when we do these small things, right? be obedient, sincere, do it cheerfully, it doesn't look like a task. Oh, man, I have to do this now. You'll enjoy it. Right? OK, we'll take a break. We'll come back, and we'll get into uh, the remaining section. Mm -hmm.